Hey guys, Neil here at Spardella Arms. Today I want to talk a little bit about 1911 slide machining. Um, we machine our slides out of forgings. Um, there's basically a lot of different ways you can make slides. Uh, some companies make a slide out of round stock, you know. Um, of course, there's, there's plenty of companies that make cast slides, but I really, really wouldn't recommend that. Um, as uh, basically a forged slide is the toughest, strongest part you're gonna get, you know. Um, so that, that's why we do it this way. Um, it's, it's not the fastest way to do it, uh, but, uh, but it's the way we do it. Now I want to talk a little bit about our process because uh, we basically do it different than all the other small shops out there. Um, you know, it, our process is when somebody orders a custom 1911, we literally make their slide uh, for their gun to their specifications. This, this uh, forging is getting pulled uh, and machined into a specific customer's slide. Um, you know, our customers can choose uh, top different, you know, top treatments, um, ball cuts, traditional, uh, traditional dust cover cuts. There's, there's a bunch of custom options, and uh, you know, when we basically machine them a one-off slide to their specifications. Now, no other company that I'm aware of actually does it that way um there are there are large production shops that that pump out uh 1911 slides all day long on production equipment um you know the, the our process is much more time consuming per piece because we are we're machining in uh, requested fe requested features as we go, whereas all the other small shops out there are going to purchase a um, a generic 1911 slide, and then they may add uh, features onto it, like top serrations or ball cuts that that uh, a customer may request. Um, you know, there's there's, of course, a debate on which which way is better, and uh, basically, there there's pros and cons to each method. So, I, as I would love to claim that my method is superior to what everybody else is doing, but the reality is, there's pros and cons to everything. So, uh, the con of the way we're doing it basically is, it's much much more labor intensive to. Uh, machine a one-off slide fully versus just buying an inexpensive production grade slide and modifying it. Um, where the, the pros of our process basically come in is we can control all the tolerances of the part and, and machine the slides to really, really exacting um, rail tolerances as well as uh, the machine finishes we're getting off our equipment are very, very good. Um, it it uh, By holding the rails to extremely tight tolerances, and we also machine our own frames, so we hold those tolerances very, very, very tight, um, then our slide frame fits uh, become much more consistent and, uh, you know, easy to achieve uh, the fit that we're looking for. We still hand fit every single gun. So everything is a trade-off. This is this is the way we do it, and it all starts with a forging. All right, so we're here on. Uh... Uh, one of our machines where that performs operation one on the slides. Uh, got our slide forging here. 
and uh, uh, plant it in the fixture for off one. French. Forking it down for consistency. Oh. Here we go. Now we can start working on it. All right, we're here in one of our four axis mills um, working on a slide. This particular customer uh ordered ball cuts we're performing the the ball cut operation um it probably will be hard to tell on camera but i'm i'm actually uh working on the blend uh basically there's there's multiple cutters that that cut these features and um right here there's a little blend line that uh i try to cut it as close as possible in the machine uh, and then of course you still have to hand blend it um, uh, blends tool blends are a funny thing um, like sure you can take really precise measurements and and stuff but uh, for these tiny little blends dialing in a machine your your sense of feel is actually really important like to me uh, I'm gonna put a thou and a half of wear uh, into my ball end mill tool to and uh, and retake this cut to hopefully blend this in just a little bit better. And it, it might look like the slide is is uh, in a weird position, and that's I, I don't actually make the cut in this position. This is a this is a full fourth axis, so if I Put it in jog mode here. See it? It'll rotate. I'm just. I just got it tilted down so you can kind of see what what uh what's going on. Now, after I've uh, taken a second pass here, I dialed in my my wear offsets and took another pass. Uh, I really like this blend. Um, I can barely feel any difference there that's just going to take a a tiny little hand bit of hand work to uh perfectly blend that and then if i uh look around here this side came out absolutely perfect i don't even think i have to hand blend this side at all um of course i'm using separate wear offsets for uh each side so I can, I can dial them in individually. Um, but while I've got the part right here, uh, I'm gonna do my in-process inspection. So I have uh, uh, my inspection tools here for the slide. Um, and my inspection sheet, it's really, it's, it's actually more of an inspection book there's a lot of different checks that goes into into making one of these parts, but but uh, I'm just going to do my in-process checks before I pull this out of the machine. So here I've got my uh, got no I've got go no go pins. Uh, in a uh, custom made pin holder here. You see my go goes and my no go pin won't go. So these, uh, the rail tolerances are some of the most critical tolerances on this part. Um, at, at least with our process.
you know, the, the original 1911 um, rail tolerances were really not that tight, but uh, we, we hold them to a much, a much tighter standard. Uh, I don't even know if I can do this one-handed, but I'll try. Um, this is a can seam mic. It's literally uh, called that because it was originally made to measure the seams of like beverage cans, which is kind of interesting, but works really good for, for this as well. Hey guys, if you like this sort of content, please subscribe to our YouTube channel to see more cool videos. And if you want to purchase yourself a custom Spardella 1911, you can go to spardella-arms.com and check out what we have to offer. Thanks for watching.